Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is September 19th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, around the table, we have just myself, Kevin Martins, so far. Uh, but if anyone joins, we'll welcome them, as always, uh, and go from there. Uh, I am back from being out over the, over the uh, summer. I had to have some uh, surgery, but I'm feeling better and back to normal. So uh, things are looking to return to normal. So uh, in that vein, uh, we uh, have spoken with Mark about moving the docs office hours back to a more regular schedule. Uh, suggestion was every other week, so that aligns with how other SIGs have their meeting schedules. Uh, and that just gives us a little bit uh, more valuable time since um, weekly seemed like it was lacking some content sometimes. Uh, this will give us a chance to produce more content or at least develop further discussion topics. Uh, so we'll ask Mark if he can update that calendar accordingly and go from there. Uh, for the contributor spotlight, Olivia Lame was published on September 10th. Thanks to Olivier for their work in the project and their response. Um, it's a great story of Olivier and how, what they've uh, contributed to the project and what they've experienced. So I uh, really appreciate him sharing that. Uh, next up after Olivier will be Shive Lamba, who's a, been a Google Summer of Code mentor uh, and project contributor. Um, and they've been working in the project for some time now. So uh, they'll, they're scheduled to be published on, on this coming Tuesday and uh, the era spotlight has been compiled. Uh, and then we have a couple more in the pipeline for October. Uh, and then uh, I've been in talk with Alyssa Tong about getting more stories contributed uh, either from other Google Summer of Code participants or others in the community. Uh, next up is there was an update to Spring Security. So this is something that's been discussed uh, at length now for some time. We knew this was the Spring Security uh, 6 was coming and the end of support for Spring Security 5 was also uh, coming alongside that. Uh, we've now had three successful weekly releases that use Spring Security 6, uh, which means the Spring Security 5 to 6 changeover, uh, Spring Framework as well from 5 to 6, um, that also switches the uh, Java EE8 to Jakarta EE9 and Jetty 10 to Jetty EE9 or Jetty 12, I should say. This is a little incorrect. Um, and this maintains compatibility for the most part. And there are, but there are a few plugins such as the LDAP plugin that must be upgraded in lockstep. So um, this is all stuff that's uh, been documented in the changelog. And these are all things that will be documented in the upcoming LTS changelog. Um, that being said, uh, the next LTS baseline selection uh, discussion started yesterday on the 18th. Uh, Mark has proposed 2.477 as the potential candidate with uh, backing from other members of the community and other developers. Uh, so we're looking at 2.477 as the uh, potential LTS baseline. Um, and I've started work on compiling the upgrade guide and change log for that, re that point one release. Uh, we wanna make sure that the Jakarta Spring Security and Jetty changes are all documented and any necessary steps are put into the upgrade guide. Uh, that also includes things like making sure the plugins are updated before and after any changes. So things to make sure of, but things to keep an eye out, out things to keep an eye out for uh, as they come up. Um, and again, that's scheduled the uh, point one release is scheduled for the very end of October, but we still have some time to make sure that everything is working and get any feedback from the community before we go too, too far with it. But uh, right now, the conversation does look positive for 2.477. Uh, it does include some other fixes as well that would make it make what that would make sense to include. Uh, however, before we get there, the next LTS release uh, 2.462.3 is scheduled for October 2nd. Uh, so that would be not next week, but the week after. Uh, and then uh, I've already gone ahead and created the change log and upgrade guide. They can be found here for further review. I would appreciate if anyone else uh, can take a look at that. Chris Stern has already reviewed and approved. Uh, Chris is the release lead for the release. So uh, thanks to them for doing so. And for the point one release, uh, Mark Waite will most likely be the uh, most likely. He, Mark, Mark will be the release lead for the 2.1 release because of how big of a change it is and what the requirements look like. Um, 
This also, uh, the next LTS baseline will also require Java 17 uh, to be used. So if you are upgrading from the 0 0.3 to the 0 0.1, uh, that means Java, you will need to upgrade your Java version to 17. Uh, next up, we have the blog posts and election updates. So uh, for this section, I wanted to make sure that we captured everything that changed or was added since the last time Docs Office Hours happened. So um, Google Summer of Code has uh, almost reached its finality. Um, the projects have concluded and most have submitted their recaps for the projects. So we've got three different blog posts from three of our contributors and participants. But thanks to them for all their work and for putting this together. Uh, it's really nice to have these recaps to sh showcase how much work they put into the projects over the summer uh, and what they took away from their experience as well, which is always very valuable. Uh, we also had some announcements regarding the recent brownouts. So updates.jenkins.io is going through some changes. Uh, the Infra team is looking to move it to another uh, another base. Uh, so they performed some brownouts over the last couple of weeks. A uh, couple, two uh, here, the 6 and 9 of September were one hour. Uh, and then we had a 24 hour brownout. Uh, the goal was to ensure that the changes for the update center don't incur any sort of disruptions. Um, ideally, it would have gone unnoticed for users. Uh, we did, find, however, find a couple of uh, there were a couple of instances that we were able to address and the infra team has been investigating and working on these accordingly. Uh, no further details at this time, but uh, there, the blog posts do have some more uh, information around what the goal was and why the brownouts were happening. Uh, and then finally, under this category, we have the Jenkins Governance Board and Officers elections. So uh, we do have multiple nominations for uh, multiple roles. So there will be a vote and an uh, actual election this year, as opposed to the last couple of years where we've only gotten one nominee. So uh, that being said, voter registration is now currently open until October 31st, 2024. Uh, the page I've got linked here for voter registration walks you through the process of how to join the voting re the registered voters group. Um, the information is a little bit outdated here for 2023, but uh, a lot of the timelines are similar, if not the same, and the process is the same. Uh, so I've made sure to actually link to the updated 2024 voter registration group. Make sure that if you are contributing to Jenkins in any way, shape, or form that you register for the voting group. It's the only way you'll be able to vote. Um, again, you have until uh, October 31st, 2024 to join the registration group. And then uh, starting November 1st, that'll be the opening of voter voting itself. Uh, we have six nominees for three separate board positions. Uh, Kanoshke is uh, resigning this term, so we'll have three spots as opposed to the normal two. Uh, so it's really great to see we have so many nominees for that. Uh, and then we have two nominees for the release officer position. So um, that'll be great to see. And uh, we'll have st candidate statements later on as well. Um, and Mark will be putting together a voter registration announcement blog post to be published. Um, just a matter of time before that's available. Uh, and then the other officer positions only have one nominee each. So uh, those will most likely continue in their positions if there's no changes. But uh, again, we'll have multiple nominees for multiple positions. So we will have a vote uh, as, as expected. Uh, I've been looking at some documentation issues since returning. Uh, one of the ones that I was taking a look at and trying to address uh, mainly was removing the usage of instance. Uh, this was an issue that was raised by Basil uh, earlier this year, saying essentially that uh, the usage of the word instance in a lot of cases isn't very clear or accurate uh, there when it's referring to something like the Jenkins controller or Jenkins agents. Um, so what I've been working on is getting through the documentation sections and updating the use of instance to be more accurate and be and refer to things more completely as either the Jenkins controller or Jenkins controller and agents, or in some cases, there might be a more general word that's just better than instance, such as deployment systems. Uh, ecosystem. Uh, so uh, I've gone through and uh, gotten review for pipeline documentation, installation documentation, scaling documentation, and managing docs. So thanks to Bruno and Chris Stern for their help with the review. 
Uh, I still need to go through the security documentation and developer documentation, as well as the tutorials to see what kind of changes need to be made there. Uh, I had submitted a security ticket previously, uh, but we ha uh, had a conversation with Daniel Beck about making sure that things are more accurate and that it's not, um, and it's a more complete uh, update for this usage instead of just a couple things here and there. So um, thanks to everyone for their help with that and uh, more to come on that. Uh, and then the next topic is Hacktoberfest. So that's approaching very soon. That's gonna be the month of October. Uh, Mark Waite and Darren Pope have been going through and identifying good first issues in um, their, they've got a spreadsheet that they've been working on to make sure that they have a good grasp on what the good first issues are. Um, and so we do have a label for that. Uh, I've added these in recently where the UI screenshots can be updated. Um, we had a recent, well, recent, uh, we had an update to the manage Jenkins page and, and configuration so that the UI and the terminology has changed a little bit and some of those screenshots just need to be updated. Uh, and then I'll be going through and making sure that those issues have the correct ask and what the needs are, um, as well as uh, making sure that if there are any other additional documentation changes that need to be had alongside those that they get made as well. Um, and then we've been essentially using this criteria as a way to find the good first issues. So if it's useful to Jenkins, if it's a suited for a new contributor, uh, and if it's part of an actively maintained component. So uh, we wanna make sure that anyone submitting contributions and submitting pull requests do get responses, do get reviews, uh, and are not just left out in the cold in terms of what they're working on. Uh, that's not a good experience for anyone. And frankly, it's unfair to those that are doing the work. Uh, and there are a few plugins that also have work that need to be done, and this could be uh, spread out over several pull requests or several uh, contributions. Um, so definitely follow up the plugin maintainers if you're curious. They have these links to the issues in Jira, uh, in Jira themselves, so you can find out further. And go for, and uh, yeah, if anything seems of interest to you, or if you feel like you have any other uh, contributions you'd like to make. Definitely feel free to reach out and check in with us. Um, Community.jenkins.io is a great place to open up the discourse. Uh, we have multiple Gitter channels that are available at any given time. And uh, you can always reach us there. And then finally on the agenda today, uh, DevOps Vir World Virtual just happened on Tuesday. Um, we had a great uh, handful of sessions on Jenkins and the community. Uh, Jan Farachek and Tim Jacome actually went through um, a UX and kind of Jenkins user experience uh, overview and what kind of changes have happened uh, since the last time we had a, had a session about that. Uh, really great content there. And then the Jenkins board and officers gave a recap of what the last year has looked like and what we're looking at for the next few months and into the ne next year. Um, so a really nice recap, really great session, and a lot of great info is in there. Uh, Basil talked at length about the Spring Security 6 upgrade and what those changes mean. So if you're curious about that as well, um, definitely something to look up after the fact. Uh, and then Mark's also, um, set, there's also a brief user interface survey that's sent out for uh, the UX. Um, so a brief user, it's a brief user interface for me that was sent out to users. Um, this is also posted in the community site, but it's something that Jan, Jan has created to understand what the UI needs and desires are, how they're, how the current UI is handling things. Um, so definitely feel free to go and find that. It's linked here again, uh, as well as being posted in the community discourse channel. So, uh, always helpful to get some feedback from the community. And uh, yeah, it will just help us in determining what kind of UI changes may or may not be needed in the future. Hello, Mark. Hi, Kevin. Sorry, I'm late. No Way late, wildly late. No, that's okay. 
Um, I was just finishing up on the agenda I had compiled here, Mark, uh, something that uh, we can check in though. Um, so I did want to ask about moving the docs office hours to a more regular schedule. We had talked about every other week before. Um, would be would that be something you'd be able to help with a calendar change? I was sure, I can forward. do that while we're while we're here on the line. Let me do it so I don't forget it. Just okay. a minute. Great, thank you very so much. So what we do? So you like every two weeks? Let me fix that. Okay, so edit. And that's right now it's listed as monthly on the third Thursday. So you would like it instead every two weeks, repeats mm -hmm. every two weeks. Great. Fantastic. Thank you very much, and Mark. No Appreciate end. It. And there we go. Saved. Great. I was looking I was looking for that the other day to see if I could do it myself, but I wasn't um I wasn't finding the right place. So I don't think I'm, I don't know if I have access to it. Yeah, you don't. It's, it's a, I think board members are the only ones who can change the Jenkins calendar or something like that. That makes sense. Um, Mark is, so uh, is there anything that you wanted to make sure we discussed today? I, so topics that I had um, spring security stuff, LTS uh, upcoming both a uh, couple weeks from now and the next point one release. Uh, we went over some of the election stuff. Uh, I linked the voter registration process in the group here in the document so that we have all that. Good. Um, yeah, no, I've got to get, I still owe a blog post for announcing the close of nominations and the opening of voter registration. Mm -hmm. I hope to do that. I, if I don't do it already, today during the working during my day i'll probably do it as a primary activity during doc's office hours asia so that'll be in about what 10 hours so okay. one yeah. way or the other i i hope to make that happen okay great thank you very much appreciate that um yeah uh and then um is there anything to know about the user interface survey i mean i know you came in right as i was finishing up with this but um yeah, just something that Jan put together, wanted to get an idea, feedback about the UI. Right. Uh, we just want people to, to answer it and would be very grateful to hear their opinions. It's, it's, he's asking a question that we really don't have other ways of asking that question. We could conceivably insert metrics into those kind of things to see which things people click, but some of the things he's asking are not, not common click, but they could be still quite important to a user because they read it for status information. So, so his question is, is actually very, very valuable. And we'd like to have people answer the survey. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so yeah, so that covers everything I had on the agenda today then, Mark. Uh, if there's nothing else to discuss, we'll go ahead and wrap up and the recording will be available shortly after, 24 to 48 hours or so. Uh, and then we're back to a more regular schedule uh, starting next session. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you then. Thanks.